Hey y'all, this is Culture Soup, where tech, culture, and business collide. It's a podcast that spoons up everything hot from social media. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, and each episode, we bring you some of the most notable and not yet notable thought leaders in tech, business, and culture. Today is Thursday, August 18th, 2022. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, creator and executive producer of the Culture Soup podcast. It's a special podcast today. We are doing the coaching corner. It's been a while. And as you know, we've been doing all audio this summer to give myself a little break while I did summer things like vacation and a little bit of business travel for speaking and signing books and also taking care of my little one. Well, we'll return with video podcast in the fall around the September time frame. but know that when October comes, we'll be ready to celebrate year four of the Culture Soup podcast and more than 300 episodes. I know we're at episode 172 by number, but if you count, we're getting very close to 300 And that includes bonus episodes in the first couple of years, as well as coaching corner episodes that weren't included in the main show episode countdown. So it's been quite a run. And I thank all of you streaming from 70 different countries. That's almost every continent, all of them except for Antarctica. And that still blows my mind. I thank you to anyone in Africa, United States, Europe, Asia, (laughs) what's left? There's some other ones, Australia, you're all listening and I thank you. Today, we're going to explore two separate topics for the Coaching Corner and I'm going to bring you up to speed with what's going on with NSC Coaching and the other brands within No Silos Communications. We are so busy And as I sit here in my new office and studio in the building where it all began in 2019, it's empty. I haven't built it out yet. The furniture is not here yet. Just a couple of desks and I'm recording. You see, we do have a few capabilities here. But when I bring all of my equipment here, it's going to be quite a thing. But I will also have the classic therapist set up. I'm not a therapist. You know that. However, I will have a couch and I will have an occasional chair so that local clients can come through. So Dallas, Fort Worth, I know you're listening because you're my number one market. If you're in the area and you want executive coaching or personal coaching, just give us a call 469-523-1453 or you can drop me an email at lm at lmichellesmith.com or go by the website lmichellesmith.com slash coaching and check out all the services and be sure to sign up for a free strategy session. And that's for local folks. I'll start taking clients in-house in the September timeframe once we've got everything set up. But in the meantime, I'm still doing online video coaching sessions for anyone that still wants those. And most of my clientele does those. And, you know, the pandemic was happening. But even before that, even before lockdown, I launched my coaching practice as an online video chatting session. And they're pretty efficient. And it allows me to reach all around the globe. I've had clients in Germany and even Canada and Africa. So if you're listening and you want coaching and you wondered if you can get those services, you absolutely can. All you need is an internet connection and Zoom. But you know what? You can even do that from a browser. All right. Listen, a couple things are brand new other than the new office and studio. We have revamped the email newsletter that many of you receive. If you don't, you want to go to my website and sign up for the newsletter. 
it goes to a nice group of folks in my coaching community and they've been receiving correspondences two and three times a week. That's where you got the NSE Rockstar Leadership Tip of the Day that was running for almost two years and some change. It's actually more than two years going into the third year. And then the Design Your Life NSC journal prompts that happened every Thursday. As you know, the Rockstar Leadership Tips began before the launch of No Thanks. Seven ways to say I'll just include myself in 2020. And we continued them throughout the time of the book release and beyond. And eventually used about 52 of those videos to feed the content for the journal that was released in January of this year. It's Slay Every Day, 52 Weeks to Rockstar Leadership. And this journal guides you week by week to becoming a rockstar leader. And some of you are working through that book right now. It's a companion to No Thanks. So those rockstar leadership tips have been sunsetted. In other words, we're not in production anymore. We have more than 100 of them. I think they're about 120. And they've lived on my YouTube channel. If you haven't visited there, there's lots of content. Go there, like what you see, subscribe, hit the bell so you'll know when new content is posted. But now we have unlisted that playlist and moved all the content to SlayNet, my online private network of like-minded leaders. They're all there and they're networking and they're chatting and they're posting their updates, their courses there. I go live there every once in a while. It's a safe space for many people that don't like to post on LinkedIn because ugh, the bosses and everyone else are there. The other thing about the NSC journal prompts will be sunsetting them soon too. Right now they're in syndication and there are about 40 of those, maybe 50. We'll be doing the same thing with them very soon, moving them to SlayNet. So you'll have access to the entire catalog as you go on your leadership journey. These two campaigns, as well as updates on the Culture Soup podcast, were the main focal points for the email newsletter. And we're switching it up. One reason is so that we can make room for the launch of my next book. Yes, please. Seven ways to say I'm entitled to the C-suite. Secrets women of color need to know now to find their happy and thrive in an exclusive corporate culture. And we are making sure that you are receiving the content you need and all of the resources that we can provide as it pertains to leadership development and all of the nuggets we can share from neuroscience and applied positive psychology as well as mindfulness. It's called my six mindful musings and I have six different categories that I cover what I'm thinking, what I'm trying, what I'm doing, what I'm working on, things like that, what I'm reading. They may change up from time to time, but there'll be six of them each time. And this week we include a campaign that's replacing the two that were sunsetting and it's called Yes, Please Ask Me Anything. That campaign launched today. If you didn't see it on LinkedIn or YouTube, go check it out. It's also on Instagram and Facebook and wherever else I might be. It's also on TikTok. But yes, please ask me anything is your opportunity to ask me anything. And I will respond directly to you. It's my way of strengthening the bond between me and my community members. And then also serving as a resource because I realize and the numbers reveal that credentialed executive coaches are a rarity. And when you begin to consider how many of them are of color, how many of them are black, and then delve into those who are women, it's almost a sliver of a percentage. So for those of you who aren't in the C-suite yet, 
or not even an officer where you work, you may not have had access to someone like me. Ask me anything gets you that access. Now, once a week, I'm going to take the most interesting question with the permission of the person who asked it without naming their names and do the video that you see we launched today every week. So you got to get your questions in. Go to Instagram and go to the link in my bio or you can find the post where we just launched the campaign today and look for the link and fill out the form, ask your question and look for the answer soon. Let's talk about the first topic. The first question that I addressed in the campaign, and as I mentioned, you could see it on any of my social networks, but the question is this, what do I do to get opportunities to pursue me? And you know, coaches who are trained and professional use the power of powerful questions to move you forward. So many times I will answer a question with a question because we believe you have the answers. For some reason, you just haven't acted on it. Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes it's concern over what other people will think. Sometimes it's cultural. You never know. So I turn that question around to you and ask the exact same thing. What do you need to do to get opportunities to pursue you? I have some insight based on my story that I've shared um, portions of in my book, No Thanks, Seven Ways to Say I'll Just Include Myself. I tell some stories that demonstrate how if your work is excellent, it naturally creates a buzz. Now, it can't just be good. It's got to be extraordinary. That's what causes people to talk. And when people talk, you remain top of mind. Top of mind is very important. And you can't just rely on other people to keep you top of mind. You have to come out of your shell. Don't be shy. Don't shrink. This is your opportunity to find creative ways to merchandise your work and bring visibility to the work that you're doing, the excellent work that you're doing. If you raise your profile, you can be found you know, that's the power of the internet. It's amazing to me to know how many professionals would rather not have a picture on their LinkedIn profile, not secure a website under their own name, not even do media interviews or write bylines or something to raise your search engine optimization when someone goes looking for you online. At the very least, they should be able to find your LinkedIn profile and that means it probably shouldn't be private. That also means you should be posting your good work because if you're found, opportunities can come to you. So three things here, be excellent. And when I mean excellent, I mean extraordinary. So extraordinary that people want to talk about you and they want to know more about you and that people will refer you. That's the kind of buzz you're looking for. The next thing you want to do, raise your profile, increase your visibility. And three, make sure that you can be found. That's the best way to have opportunities chase you. Now, based on what I've shared, grab your journal and answer these three questions. How can I improve my work so that it improves my brand? and my reputation and so that I will be excellent. Write down your answer. Here's question number two. How can I create buzz about my work beyond it simply being excellent? How can I raise my visibility? And question number three, how can I improve the ability for people to find me. You want those opportunities to find you. So you need to be top of mind. The new e-newsletter talks about some of the things we're up to, what I'm thinking about, what I'm reading, 
let's talk about what I'm doing. I mentioned that I'm in this new space. It's empty right now and it, you may even hear an echo. I hope not. <laughs> I think the acoustics are pretty good in here, but we're going to be working on that. But the other thing is that I just got back from Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace. And I say just, it's been about a week because in between going there and being here, I was down for about five days with, you guessed it, COVID-19. Now, no shade to NABJ and NAHJ, which really did some extraordinary planning to make sure that we were safe. You had to get a health pass from the application clear in order to even initiate your registration. And for those of you that don't know, that means that you need to have proof of vaccination to even register. Then once we were on site, it was all about masking up and you couldn't enter the footprint without a mask on. And that meant any of the sessions too. So shout out to NABJ and NAHJ for making the effort to keep us safe. But when you consider there was over 5,000 journalists and it wasn't just the vaccinated journalist, we were in Caesar's Palace. We had to crisscross smoking gamblers who were probably covid too, who were also unmasked just to get where we were trying to go. Now, I'm not saying everybody was careful. Plenty of people were partying in different events after hours that were not NABJ sponsored and they probably didn't have on masks. But when you consider that I went to great, great lengths to be safe and I still caught it, no wonder there are other people who did too. In fact, I didn't even stay in the conference hotel. My idea was that I didn't want to be around the crowds. I did not even take an Uber to and from the airport. Now, part of that's for safety. I don't like doing that, especially when I arrive in a city after dark. I usually get a black car, but that kept me safe too. And when I was on the plane, I not only masked up, I had a face shield. It's clear. And you know what? At least you can see me smile. But I thought I was safe. Lo and behold, my notification on my iPhone went off the Monday after the conference. And, you know, in between there, I actually spoke at the Women's Leadership Summit here in Dallas and signed books, too. But my notification let me know that I came across somebody and was exposed August 2nd and 3rd. Hey, if you don't have these alerts on your um, so iPhone or Android, make sure that you turn them on because they're highly effective. And as people report their positive results, if your phone comes into close contact with their phone, it will let you know you've been exposed. All right. So there you have it. I've been to Las Vegas. I did a speaking op and also a book signing here in Dallas. I also signed books in Las Vegas. And then I was down with COVID-19. Not much happened between then and now, but I'll tell you what I'm doing now. I am about to finish signing a bunch of books for the organization Black Girls in Cyber. And that's an exciting nonprofit that's there for Black women who are trying to take on new roles and leadership roles in cybersecurity. That is a huge, huge area of business. As cyber attacks become more and more frequent, international and domestic, our sisters are wanting to lead the pack. So they're gathering once a month, every few weeks to listen to speakers, to build programs, to pull other black girls through the pipeline and other black women. And they're educating themselves so that they can be ready for these certifications to get these jobs. I'm so very happy to ship copies of the remix to these ladies ahead of speaking to them on September 29th. Then in October, I'm going to be so busy, but I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. twice. Once, and this one is quite a doozy. In fact, I am so humbled to have received the invitation from Denise Graves, the opera diva, the mezzo-soprano. I call her our Carmen. She's everybody's Carmen because she is the most memorable and she's the most dynamic. Ms. Graves has 
a foundation named after herself, the Denise Graves Foundation. And about this time last year, she invited me to be on the advisory board. As she's been ramping up, she has been doing some phenomenal work to create experiences for young artists and to also highlight the hidden voices that perhaps history has hidden. And they're typically people of color who made extraordinary contributions to the art form that is opera. She will be having a launch event in Washington, D.C., September 30th, and it's called Shared Voices. It's a consortium and conservatory for HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. And man, she has lined up at least more than a dozen schools, both HBCUs and PWIs, but the best, Howard University, of course, Morehouse, Spelman, Bowie State, Johns Hopkins, Peabody Institute, the Juilliard School. I could go on, but she's bringing these schools together in order to have a day of learning and a day of excellence as they are exposed to the artists and celebrities in this space that can teach them what they need to do to be amazing at their careers and get work consistently and encourage diversity, equity, and inclusion for the opera. Now, how do I come in? (laughs) Yeah, well, as you know, I am on the board as well of Opera America. That's where I met Miss Graves. And in fact, we haven't met in person yet, which is crazy because we met some years ago by email. Gosh, it had to have been around 2016, 2017. And we've been friends ever since. She's been on the show. You've heard her speak about her passions and her foundation. But she has teamed with the Dean of the Chadwick Bozeman College of Fine Arts at Howard University. As you know, the Black Panther himself went to Howard and they've named that college for him. But get a load of this. The Dean is none other than Claire Huxtable herself, Dean Felicia Rashad. So between Dean Rashad, Diva Graves, and the president, Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, they're pulling together an experience for these young artists that they will not forget. I'm coming to the table with my signature message around knowing your value and how it's so important, not just in corporate America, but also in the arts, to know that before someone else deems your value for you. And you're wafting in the wind as a result. They need to be the CEO of their own business, which is Me, Inc. If they can understand that at this early stage in their careers, nobody will be able to break their souls. And only five days later, I will make a full circle moment also in Washington, D.C., with the Executive Leadership Council. If you've read my book, No Thanks, Seven Ways to Say, I'll Just Include Myself, either edition, you know that a part of my origin story happened at one of their leadership development seminars. That's where I met none other than my mentor coach, Miss Trudy Bourgeois, and she challenged me on understanding what it is I really wanted And she also poured my value back into me. Well, this was an extraordinary moment for me. And later, I would attend the ELC's Mid-Level Managers Symposium in D.C. as well, ahead of their gala. And this is it, (laughs) y'all. I actually get to speak there as a fellow of the ELC and also one of their go-to elite coaches as we've been working with them on Decoded, sponsored by Google. I've worked on the DEC program that was sponsored by Merck for their executives. 
and some other programs that gave some exposure to black leaders, to executive coaches, and also some bleeding edge thought leadership when it came to breaking through as a black leader at these organizations. I'll be appearing both virtually and in person in Washington, D.C. for this symposium, and I will be delivering my signature message, knowing your value and how it can push you forward in your leadership quest. Now, two other things. I'm just not going to bore you with my calendar. There's more coming up this fall, but in the meantime, let's take on topic number two. And that also comes from the brand new e-newsletter format, My Six Mindful Musings. In it, I ponder an idea that occurred to me after watching cable news. And you know what the news cycle has been full of, but in the spirit of not naming names that will bring this podcast down, I'll only say that a reporter was finishing up a report from the field and they referenced what everyone knows to be a high crime. And before pitching back to the anchor, the anchor refers back to that very same high crime as a very interesting approach. Now, we know that she wasn't reading. Anchors don't do that when they're pitching back and forth to reporters. The lead-in may be scripted, but some of the banter that happens after the reporter's over comes directly from the anchor. She wasn't reading. And it was amazing to me to see how, with a few words, she immediately dumbed down a high crime. How many of you have experienced this in corporate America where someone does something that's absolutely unequivocally unacceptable, egregious even. And when it's referred to by other parties, they don't call it egregious. They don't call it unacceptable. They dumb it down and they may call it something like, that was interesting or wow, that's curious. But within a couple of words, They've essentially taken the shock and awe out of a situation that merits shock and awe. Did you know that there was privilege in the language that we use? You know, one of my friends, John Graham Jr., has written a book called The Plantation Theory. And in the book, he discusses the politics of language in corporate America he submits that there is a language that's used by the power center that those that are marginalized or othered do not know or they're not necessarily adept in unless they come from certain backgrounds. He says it's the language of risk management. Now, when you take that into consideration, it probably adds up that each time someone speaks in corporate America and maybe they're describing something that is egregious, that the notion to dumb that down and make it seem less risky is the order of the day. So consider what this means for people who are othered if something happens to them in this area that does not center them, that Perhaps it was a microaggression. Perhaps it was racist or sexist. But those words connote a real risk. So you're hushed immediately when someone uses a word like, that was curious. And it's usually an exchange that happens between people who are in the power center among those folks, and then in mixed company, those who are privileged and centered and those who are not. But ever so often, people who are in the margins may find some safe haven with someone else who's in the margins who hasn't bought into the language. And therefore, they can express themselves. But it's usually 
not with someone who can make a change or impact what happened. And if it is, that individual typically will dumb it down. So you can also have people who are on the outside, not in the power center, who may acknowledge the nature of whatever the person did that's negative, but then they will also use the same language of the power center. What recourse does anyone who was othered in the situation receive? It's very rare, extremely rare, that someone will call something out that will leave the corporation or even its leadership exposed. Think about that the next time you hear something that is really, really bad in your workspace and you turn around and call it something it's not like. That's an interesting approach. It's the language of privilege. And it's all through corporate America. So I have a coaching question for you before we leave. Get out your journals. Answer this question. What will you do to be mindful of the words you use in your workspaces that will begin to advocate for people in the margins. We say we want diversity, equity, and inclusion in our workplaces, but guess what? You can be a person of color, you can be someone in the margins, and you can also double down and reinforce the corporate values that keep you othered. That's it for today's show. We will return in a couple of weeks with our last summer show, all audio, and look forward to us returning to video in the month of September. Find us online at theculturesoup.com, on Instagram and Twitter at The Culture Soup, and on Facebook at The Culture Soup Podcast. Until next time. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Fast Communication, LLC. The Culture Soup Podcast is a registered trademark of No Silos Communications, LLC.